Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Truth Podcast. My guest today is Heather Hargrove, and she is a self-described customer service snob. That is really funny. <laughs> Heather is committed to optimizing sales strategy and execution via customer value creation. Her goal is to connect business professionals with the tools, systems, and peoples they need to streamline their sales. Uh, welcome to the show, <laughs> Heather. How are you? Thanks this for having is like, me. This is like take two, because like, we had like technical difficulties last time. Listen, which, the last time the was just the getting to know you face. We're like, oh, let's just hang out for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Your video was kind of crapping out on us there for a minute. Oh, mine? Yeah. Okay. You start going like, you look like a Godzilla That's movie. That's just the way that I talk. I'm very insulted. That <laughs> <you think I'm> <laughs> like. <laughs> it looked like a Godzilla movie for a second there, but I think we're good now. Yes, I did. I learned, I practiced that a lot. <laughs> Hi. Anyway. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> you can tell that we've talked before. I have a little bit of fun with this. So. Yes. Off with the glasses. God, I hate these things. <laughs> anyway, I have to be able to see, I would imagine, so to read. Now I don't have to read anymore. Just going off instinct, people. There you go. That's the way it should be. Just go with the flow. Follow. All right. Oh, so my first question to you is, what made you want to become an entrepreneur? What would let that fire for you, the thing on the inside that says, yeah, this is what I got to do? Uh, companies these days piss me the fuck off. <laughs> okay. Um, it's just... So every company that even like when I was in the military, I guess I've always had that mindset of learning new things and implementing them. I'm not that, hey, this is the way we've always done it. This is the way it needs to be done kind of person. And a lot of companies keep that old school mentality of this is the way a company should be ran. This is the way, da -da, you know, I'm like this is the way we do it. And they don't implement, they don't grow, they don't foster relationships with their employees. And a couple of the companies I was with recently took VC funding and all crap went down to the employees after that. It kind of became all about the, the funding and not employee growth, employee retention, employee development. And I get bored easy. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why I like even going into like one of them, I'm like, I ended up coming and getting paid more than my boss because on my interview, I'm like, listen, like I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kill it. And I, I don't do a 2% increase every year. Like, you have to pay me what I'm worth because within a month or so, and then, yeah. And then I ended up get, actually getting promoted five months in. So into like a position I've never done before. Um, I like moving quickly and I can't move quickly. If I'm, if I'm growing somebody else's company, I got to wait for their approval and for them to get on board and make decisions and do that stuff. And I couldn't do it. I like creativity and moving like fast. One follow-up question to that. Uh, what is VC? So that people understand. Uh, venture capitalists. So basically um, certain companies try to raise funds. So that way either like some just like to go public and to raise, you know, series funding. Um, others just want to be able to grow. And instead of keeping it like your own company, when you're raising your own capital, you're reaching out for capital from other sources. And then once you've taken their funding, you're kind of at, you know, their, you got to kind of do their bidding. Yeah. Because now it's like you're an investment for them and they want to see a return on the investment. And now you're more concerned with them getting their return than your employees getting and compensated, your, and trained vision, and all that stuff. Your vision gets shifted. Yes, completely. Yeah. I get what you're saying. It's Western not. culture is interesting to me because we are so stuck in this eight hours. You have to be there. Even if you're producing anything or not, doesn't matter. Still yeah. got to be here eight hours. So, you know, well, you now can... it's nine when you think about it. Cause yeah. you no yeah. longer have, and that's why it's funny. Like looking back at some of the old movies, like that Do Dolly Parton song working nine to five. Yeah. It's no longer that at some point, the people that were working nine to five got in charge of stuff. And they were like, you know what? That free lunch we used to get, we're not going to give that to other people. Now what we're going to do is make them work eight to five or nine to six. We're going to give them an hour lunch break in between, which these days, the majority of people are either still connected to their emails on their cell phone during their lunch break, or you're like me, where I've worked in logistics and you don't like, you don't take a lunch because you're still working, but now you're there for nine, nine hours. hours. Yeah. yeah. So. It's incredible. 
I just think that it's, it's even in factories, I find it fascinating that when you're, the machine goes down, somebody will come over and say, hey, grab a burn, clean up, get busy. Yep. For what? What are you talking about? We're paying you. You got you to gotta stay doing something. I'd be yeah, like, that's so stupid. Pay me, on, pay me on my production. Pay me per piece. Pay me for yeah. something else. And then you'll have more incentive to get the machine running. Yep. To do the job you're actually supposed to do. Yes. It's crazy. Absolutely yeah. crazy. People are so stuck in a mindset. I don't think they can get out. You know? But that's why, but it's not even just so we have as employees and people going into the job market, we have a lot of strength. Like, and I don't think that we have to, to show that strength. Like I had people that'll come to me and they're like, oh, you know, I'm switching jobs. And now that I'm looking, I'm like, people, they want me to go back and get my degree. And then I'm like, well, then you're going to the wrong place because what you're looking to do does not require a degree. So if you walk into a company and they're like, we need you to have a bachelor's degree for this position just to show up and they're not taking your experience into account, that's not the company for you. Exactly. And I think if more people would put yes. their foot down and be like, no, thank you. Your style of of employment is not conducive with what I'm looking for in life. And then if everyone just kept doing that, then employers will start to see a trend and actually start making changes. But right now people are still stuck in the mindset that that's what they need to do. And they need to start stepping up and saying no. I agree with you. I don't want to discount education, but I no. do believe it's a vicious circle. I believe that because the colleges like to make money and the people that are in charge, they value that and they value that piece of paper that people took four or five, whatever years and a lot of money to get, that it puts more value on the actual education than maybe is deserved. I think experience over book learning. I'll take experience over book learning any day. Oh, me too. That's what I'm teaching my kids. So I'm like, if they want to be a doctor, lawyer, accountant, whatever, if it needs a degree, great. If they legit just want to go to college, great. But if not, listen, as long as you are not sleeping on my couch being lazy, I'm perfectly fine with you getting whatever online education you can because there's plenty of free stuff out there. Even like Harvard and Yale, like you can audit their courses. You just don't get the credit for it. And you can right. watch them. You can watch them online for free. Like why yeah. should you have to go into debt to have a teacher sit there and look at your paper and grade it? It's not. And to give you the credit. Yes. So that you can get the piece of paper to hang on the wall that yeah. costs you a ton of money. Oh, yeah. I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. And I right now, I currently use neither of them. Wow. Any, yeah, I got my bachelor's in accounting and my master's in public administration with a focus on governmental management. But I and will I say that you're well-spoken, that you're intelligent, mm -hmm. and that I think the educational system helped you with that. I, I'm not going to say you weren't intelligent before right. that you came in dumb <laughs> or something like that. That's not what I meant. But I, I mean, a, a person with a college education is generally more uh, well-read and stuff like that, especially if they apply themselves and they were right. smart people in the first place. But I think it I enhances think I didn't that. really apply myself. Okay. <laughs> well, if you're smart, oh, you don't have to. God. I was busy raising two babies at the same time, which is probably wow. another reason why I didn't really use it because a lot of it too, because I did the military first. So when I got out, like I was basically transitioning from a two, my, you know, the two-year college to University of Central Florida for the four-year portion. And I was at like the transfer thing. And I'm like pregnant as all can be with my second child. <laughs> they make me go to this thing and they're talking about, oh, you can do these late night things where you're up and you part. And like, I'm like, what am I doing here right now? I was like, this is not. And then, yeah. And it's hard to do internships. It's hard to do all those sure additional wow. things. And so I got out with no real experience and just kept going from there. And then sales was what I was always good at. And that seems to be where the money maker is. Like I know people that are in sales making a ton of money with no college degree. Ever. Oh yeah. 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 You got to, but you got to be good at sales though. Yeah, but you can learn it. It's a learning Personally, trait. Personally, I suck at sales, to be honest about it. See, because you tell yourself you suck at sales. It's the wrong mindset. Oh, no, I, I didn't tell myself. I have evidence. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I have evidence. You got to wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to rock it. It's going to be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Fantastic. And then it rocks me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I just don't want to talk to people. I'm just kidding. No, I'm kidding, though. No, I'm I not, kid. <laughs> not horrible at it, but, you know, I, I, I had difficulty selling ice cubes in hell. I don't know. 
No, I'm kidding. Because they melt That's very quickly. I That's can understand that. Yeah, that makes sense, I think. Yes, I can understand <laughs> no. that. Then. See, unless you have something that would keep the ice frozen while right. they melt, no one's going to purchase See, that. I should have hired you. You have to see. That... That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're talking about, well, being pregnant and having two kids and all that. What other things kind of held you back on your entrepreneurial journey that you either had to overcome, you know, either internal or external, and how did you overcome those? Um, I hated being in front of the camera. Yes, you wouldn't notice now, like if you go look at all my stuff. Um, even when I started my entrepreneurial journey, well, first let's back it up, like, for, like when I was starting out, because I did the army and the, the different things that I did, like the companies that I worked for, we weren't huge tech companies. So being for a tech company that I actually learned about software as a service and like you know, all these drag and drop platforms and what you can actually do without having to hire a developer to build something. Um, and then I found ClickFunnels, which was the best entrepreneur platform out there. And the way that they actually coach you and train you just to keep like for free, on with all the free videos just to teach you what to do even if you use their platform or not they're like here learn stuff um, I started learning stuff and then realized that I don't like being in front of the camera Aww. and I actually got held back a little bit because I wanted to be the person behind the person so I was like how do you start a company if you don't want to be the you know the person and then Luckily for me, I'm blessed with my kids and a 10 year old daughter who not, you know, has been on like when it was musically and then was TikTok, um, got me playing around with that. And it wasn't until I started making TikTok videos that I just was like, oh man, like video content is fantastic. It's beautiful. And these days, just seeing the comments on there, it's a different audience. Like I've never been an Instagram audience person. Like I've tried, I just... I don't like to get completely done up with my, ma like to me, I always felt self-conscious on Instagram. Um, I was late to the game on that and Facebook. I didn't really do all that stuff, but uh, TikTok now, like I'll make, even off of TikTok, I'll make videos with no makeup on and in my pajamas. And I get a ton of like positive feedback and people that are actually listening to what I have to say, even though I'm wearing my jammies or running around my house barefoot. Like, <laughs> so now I- I gotta I, try that because I don't, I don't think I've done that so far it's so much fun so now i put up videos everywhere i go live all the time on multiple platforms i make video content i try to get people to step up and make video content and yeah it's it's very freeing and it really does help you find yourself so it wasn't it until is. that point it is very freeing because yeah. some people are self-conscious about it and for me i just i I'm just feel natural doing this yeah. stuff. It's not very hard for me. I don't really, you know, I don't have a problem with it. I have never minded being like star of the show type thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's been okay all the time with me, you know, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can get why it would be a thing where you'd be self-conscious about it. Mm -hmm. I've, I've kind of been that way in a way, I guess. Um, because video, it was the technology that just wasn't working for me. Right. That's the thing that kept getting me. It wasn't that I was afraid to be on camera or anything like right. that. It was just, you know, how the heck does this stuff work? You know, <laughs> how does this work with this thing and this work with this thing and this work with the other thing yeah. I have? And <laughs> well, but not, even other than that, like when you think about the platforms to choose from, I'm like before... TikTok had like the videos that were living there, a majority of the video stuff would just fade away, which was fine. So you went there, but other than that, it was like YouTube. And then like for YouTube, they're like, well, you need your intro, your outro, your thumbnail, your SEO text, and this and this, and you need all these different things. And I think a lot of people get held back mm -hmm. because they're, you know, like, honestly, I'm probably going to start a YouTube like channel with my business partner for the clothing line and just be like, listen, th this is the, imper the imperfect YouTube channel. Like we're not doing all that yet. We're just going and just showing people to just, you don't have to have, like, not everyone starts at, like, those perfect things and everything that you're watching. And you're like, man, how do they do that? I'm like, I don't, there's no time to learn all that. Like, you just have to go. So with TikTok, it was able to just push a button and go. And now, I want to ask you a question about the different platforms and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a question because I'm having the same issue. So I'm on all kinds of different things. So yeah. I heard radio and, and uh, Spotify and YouTube. And YouTube's kind of been the main thing. But when you're promoting it, it's almost like you can promote one at a time and one suffers from the other being promoted because 
if you're promoting like on Facebook and Twitter and all these things, and you're promoting the same show over and over again on different platforms, it just becomes too saturated. People start getting like, oh my gosh, you know? <laughs> no, because um, that's what we think. We, we see it as being saturated because you're seeing it. The thing is the audiences that you have on each individual platform is going to be a little bit different. So the people that I have on my Instagram, I don't generally have on my Facebook. And then the same thing with TikTok. So it's, it's going to reach a different audience each time you promote it. You, of course, you know, streamline the promotion because you're going to know what people are looking at. So, and then if you're doing like for the podcast, you're going to be promoting, it's going to go across the multiple platforms, but yeah, put them yeah. on all of it. Tell them all, yeah. like, oh, look at you everywhere. Because it's not for them, it's not saturated. For them, just like um, people when they start to start looking like when I... Uh oh! I see everybody that's promoting <laughs> your things. videos. Like, your like, video stopped the market, there the for a is. second. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, you're good. It, is it, it better it now? Just like blanked right out. Yeah. We're <laughs> see that? I don't that know if I I'm going to edit this or not. Thing. I don't know. <laughs> because we're talking about technical challenges, and we're talking about posting video and yeah. all that other stuff. I may just leave that in there so that everybody can see there oh, is yeah, a real challenge. Oh, yeah, it's a real world. Really like, I've had happen. my kids come in before, and, like, I'll be like, I'll be like, listen, I told you I was doing something, and they'll walk right into oh, the kitchen. They're, they're more than welcome. Oh, because, yeah, so I'm like, oh, I don't yeah. care. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't care. I've like, had pets and, and gerbils and <laughs> other people, dogs and cats. I didn't know I could bring my gerbil to this. That would have been great. You can. We I listen to I a, bring my gerbil. We listen yeah. to a spinning wheel for almost, like, 30 minutes. Oh, <laughs> no, I wish mine would work out. Mine does parkour. It's really weird. Oh wow! Like he, he's a climber, so like yeah. he climbs the cage and like just did it, did it, like the whole thing at the top, and then it'll like drop down and then it'll go up the side, and yeah, that's he's amazing. So cute to watch. It's but fun. They, but yeah, they have they had they're they're something else. But it was <laughs> it was it was crazy. I've had so many things go happen on this show. I'm not even bothered anymore. <laughs> yep, and that's what it's like. Everything is going to be imperfect these days and the people with the strive for perfection, it's just, you can't be yourself and people can tell when you're not authentic. And it's when you're your true self that that connection like really happens. Yeah. And not everyone, I try to tell people, I'm like, not everyone's going to be your audience. So let's say you're promoting your stuff on multiple platforms and you have somebody like, that's like, oh man, like, I don't want to see this anymore. Da -da. You might lose that person as a follower, but that, they're not, they're not your person. So right. let them exactly. go. Exactly. Yeah. So, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I do. So it's, so, okay. So let's get into a little bit about what you do now. Shoot, what don't I do now? Um, right, <laughs> right now, so everything it's great because I've started multiple aspects when you're an entrepreneur. It's kind of like, you can't just, yes, one is good, but you kind I of start to love, you're yeah, going. you're like all over the place. I'm all over the place too. Yeah. So every, all my stuff has kind of come together. So I do um, consulting. So I do um, business consulting. I help clients that are currently using like websites take their stuff more into like um, click funnels and help them with their social media stuff, getting their landing page built out to try to help them generate more and more income and then work on their back end funnels. Cause a lot of people for some reason don't have email sequences to sell their customers other items. Yes. So you're missing a lot of the stuff on the front end is not your main goal. And that's what people don't think about. It's the back end. It's the fostering the relationship, having email sequences, letting them get to know you. And if somebody's buying from you, if you're not selling them more stuff, you're doing it wrong. So it's helping them through that. Um, so that help gets, you know, the consulting with that side. Um, we also, I'm a co-owner of a clothing line. So we have a couple of our own items that we're, um, we're relaunching, but a majority of the stuff we're doing now is we have people that come to us that are looking to start and sell clothing. So we do manufacturing. So we're actually in the midst of creating a bundle where we actually have um, a design. We give you the mock-ups. We give you a funnel template and help coach you through the process of creating, you know, your sales funnel and your sequences. And we help you actually do pre-sales. So we don't make people buy shirts and stuff from us in advance. We teach you how to pre-sell it, make sure the design works, and then you purchase with money that people have already given you, which a lot of people don't understand that they can do that. So helping them through that and at the same time coaching people through TikTok and how to start selling their products and getting on video and creating content because e-commerce is actually very big on TikTok. And if you do it the right way, like there was one that was these, um, oh my God, around the holiday season, of course. First video that they posted, it was these little hot cocoa, like little bomb things. And basically they showed a video of it. They take the ball 
you'd put it in the hot water and the chocolate melts and the marshmallows come out from the middle. And they sold out on that one video. It was the only video they had ever posted. It was like, and then next thing you know, it's like on the end the thing saying, sorry, we're currently on back order. Like we're sold out. Wow. Like, that one video e-commerce, because people like to see how things are being made. They like to connect with the people that they're working with. I'll spend more money on a product if I like the company, if I like yeah. their beliefs, what they're putting their money into, like take my money. I don't need the cheapest thing. I want to put my, I want to support people that connect with me. And that's what TikTok is doing for e-commerce, which is nice. There's this kid on there with apparel, like he's killing it on there right now. He's like, I think he's like 17, 18. And yeah, he's crushing it, like making a ton of money, just sitting there and talking to people while he's making stuff, showing the process. It's, it's beautiful. It's, it's really nice to see the whole behind the scenes. So if someone doesn't know what TikTok is, what, what, what kind of platform is it? What, uh, how long is their videos? Things like that. Yeah. Um, so TikTok is basically a video content platform. What you're doing is creating about 15 seconds is the, usually the shortest to a 60 second video. 60 seconds is the absolute longest that you can have um, uploaded. Now the difference between, let's say your Instagram stories, your Facebook stories and all that, and your Snapchat is on TikTok, your video lives there forever. It's not going away. And the way it is right now, it's like you could post a video and like two weeks later it goes viral. It's, it's nuts because there's wow. more people watching the content right now than producing content. And every time somebody is new to the app, you land on this page that offers suggestions. It's called the for you page until the algorithm picks up what you're looking for. And you'll see, like I've created new accounts just to kind of take a look at it. You'll see older videos that get pushed because so every time somebody new, like your video can all of a sudden start reaching all these new people okay. and it lives there. The ha it lives with the hashtags where people can look up the hashtags and it just, it just stays there. Um, and basically like you just, try to connect as quickly within 15 to 60 seconds. And like with any other social media, you can kind of look around and see like different ideas and stuff like that. But yeah, it just lives there and everybody gets a shot. Like every video is pushed out. So it's just the reactions to the video that determines on if the algorithm is going to push it out more. And the great thing is t with TikToks, likes are like the least, the least like, like they don't care how many people like your, like your video. That's not the highest thing. The highest thing is like, if, are they going to rewatch the video? Because it repeats, it goes on autoplay. So that way, like if, you, if you're watching a video, as soon as it ends, it goes again. So it goes to a rewatch where on Facebook stories and Instagram, it automatically goes to the next video, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes up to like your queue, it cues you out. This one, it stays. So it'll keep watching like over and over again. So if people are rewatching your content, that's telling TikTok that you've created something that people are enjoying and that's high on the algorithm. Then comes like if they're watching the whole thing or how far into the video are they watching? Are they commenting and are they sharing? And then if they like it, that's like the lowest common denominator. Like they don't care about the likes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Didn't know that. So yeah, you taught me a lot because I seen a video on there. I think it was yours, I believe. And um, so then when I looked on your thing, it was like from, it wasn't from right recently. It was from a, lot, a while ago. And mm -hmm. it was funny because I thought to myself, I'm like, that's weird. Why is it doing that? Now you just explained that to me. Yeah. So, hey, guess what? <laughs> now, I, now I kind of understand it a little bit. Yeah, it always comes back. And that's why um, we were very adamant on listen. Like if you post a video... And all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I'm not getting the views that I want. Or people get very self-conscious and I'm just like, just go have fun with it. Ultimately, just enjoy it. But um, they'll start deleting them. And TikTok doesn't like that. Mm, okay. So that ends up hurting okay. you in the long run. Just let it go. Just just own it. It's your video. Like, it doesn't matter. It, you didn't do anything bad. You know, like sometimes it's just the right, like your demographic that's going to like that video isn't on right now. Like you can look at analytics if you go to the pro account. But sometimes like I posted two videos yesterday, the first one, like, eh, like a couple, you know, like 30, 40, 50 at first. The second one, I think I got to like 300 in the afternoon, but it, now it's like at over a thousand. And then the one right before it is at like 600. So it has that downfall effect too. Like I did one and it got three. It still has three. 
<laughs> I'm not good at that stuff yet. I don't know. <laughs> Well, it's okay. It takes you. It, my first videos were not great. You have to keep going. Yeah. And you got to keep, yeah. I'm up to doing about two to three a day now. Right. That's and good. It, doesn't, That's it good. does not take long. People are always very concerned about time, but um, a lot of people, especially people that are already familiar with creating content on other platforms, like you save videos within the TikTok app, like, as inspiration you save different sounds different ideas and then i basically when i have 15 to 20 minutes where my kids aren't bugging the crap out of me i set up my ring light and i just scroll through my saved videos and i'm like all right what do i want to do right now and i come up with my idea and i just go and then you post it and videos go viral without any text or hashtags i think that's my thing is i don't know what to say on it you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to talk about? What am I going to in 60 seconds? Because I'm right. kind of long-winded. <laughs> did you look at the, the podcast one that I gave you, that guy? Yeah, I yeah, did. What, I yes, did. what do you think? I like it. I don't know how to do it yet. Okay. Where he's pointing to stuff and he's got things that are popping up on the screen. I'm like, I don't have any you idea don't know how, how he to did do that. Yes. <laughs> right. I've actually already shown that because I have my Facebook group. So I've actually recorded a video with that. Oh, and good. I'm, I'm going to look I'm, at that though. Yeah, I've been I'll send so you like, busy. I'm doing a boot camp on it too next week. I think I'll, talk, I'll talk to you after, but I was so yeah. busy lately and there's so, so many projects I'm working on right now yeah. that I, I literally worked from three in the morning yesterday till 10 o'clock last night. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. I had a lot, of, I had a few breaks in between or something, but it was you just. You took a nap. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> I, really I would didn't. have had to take a nap. I nope. couldn't do it. I no, nope. I'm an Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. No, me, not so much. Me, I'm like, I, I, I've, I've determined I like to like, I have, because I'm an introvert at heart. Oh, So okay. like, I'm exhausted throughout the day because of the fact that I have to be so outgoing and have right. to like, Huh. So like my mind is like, we're even right now. I'm like, I'm tired in my head. <laughs> See, this is my natural state of being. So it's like, you know, I wake up and I'm like, ding, you know, no, I would, I would rather like not have anything and like, just be able to like relax and like do my own stuff and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. than to be like surrounded by, but I'm like, now I've started to love it and I do it more, but I'm still an introvert at heart. Like where I have to like take a, a break and decompress. Yeah, you got to do that. I yes. for me, I wake up like this. This is me. Yeah, I I I, I was uh, I was a kid with a tape recorder, so <laughs> I would do the weather. I'd put music on it, and then I would try to yes. take my voice on it to uh, practice. I actually, this is weird, but I actually looked at. I used to watch, and I still do. I watch on occasion. I watch the pro wrestling stuff because I've got a guy that I'm mentoring that wanted to do a pro wrestling podcast, so I'm mm -hmm. doing that. But I would look at how they talk. They call it a promo. And so I would always uh, take pointers on how they got their message across to the audience because right. it helps you be able to communicate better. Right. So I would, I'd watch it all the time just to, just to see how they tried to draw you in. Kind of, you know what I mean? Right. That type of thing. And uh, I found that was very helpful, to be honest. Ah, that's what you have to do on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have to, have to cut a promo on TikTok. <laughs> well, you just got to start. No, you got to start watching what's drawing you in. Cause that's exactly. why I try to tell people when they make a video and they're like, Heather, why isn't this one? And I'm like, well, when you look at it compared to what you like watching, what do you I like to try to make them think as well on their own without me just like giving answers all the time. Oh, of course. Yeah. But sometimes it's just like, I'm like, so take a look around what's attracting your attention to it, you know, like, but make yeah. it your own. Like, what are you comfortable with? Same thing, like what's working and then try to, you know, to make it the same thing. Once you start exploring it, you're going to love it because the text part is super simple once we got it. <laughs> it's so simple and it just pops up and it's great and you can make it disappear. Wow. Like you can smack it away and it'll like poof, it's, it's fun. Yeah, I'll, I want to try all that. Mm -hmm. but it's tough. I'm, I'm making, I'm doing a lot of stuff right now. I'll just put yeah. it that way. And, um, it's, it's fun. I'm, I'm having a blast. Trust me. I have a, I have a, a lot of fun, but there's a lot of work, a lot yeah. of work and I like doing it though. So right. I think it's great. So uh, let's go back to you. There's enough about me in this show. Okay. <laughs> last a Come on, let me interview now. you. Let me go. All right. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So 
you're consulting for other businesses and yeah. you're starting your own clothing line. Doesn't sound like you're busy at all. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, the good thing is with the clothing line, so it was one that a friend of mine has had for about four years, five years that I've known him. I think it started even before that. Um, but when I started consulting, I was just helping him out and like spitting, you know, and he's like, Heather, just please, like, for the love of God, just like do that part, you know, like come in, like, let's do this together. Um, so yeah, we're actually um, restructuring. Um, and instead of having a bunch of inventory of our own, we're doing a friends and family sale. We're getting rid of everything that we have. And then we have a couple items um, especially, you know, like a cap that based on one of the viral videos that I had that we ended up, we're trying to um, raise funds for a local LGBTQ um, okay. nonprofit here in Orlando. So the cap is ready to go. I have a funnel being built for it now. Nice. And then um, we'll have a couple other items that we're going to have, but a majority of it is helping people that want to get into this field. Start to develop and grow and, you know, sell their products. That's and good. Manufacturing it. No, that's good. Yeah. And then, so you're doing that. You're still doing business consulting. Is there anything else that you're doing? Uh, just the TikTok stuff. I'm actually working on, um, I've spoken to a couple of influencers and I'm hoping to have um, a TikTok virtual summit wow. set up within the next three months. So the date and everything will be by then. Like we'll know all of that by the end of this month. And then the process of the virtual summit and then the, you know, and having it actually like the date within the next three months, but yeah, having influencers come on and just kind of talk about how they gain their followers. Um, what, you know, like, let's say if they lost, you know, they woke up tomorrow and all their followers were gone. Like what would they do? Like if their account was just deleted, like what would they do to get them all back? And oh, how good. Did, yeah. yeah. If they started from scratch today, yeah. knowing what would what be your yep. system of getting people to, to yes. follow you? Correct. Wow. And how they convert for business because a lot of people want to know. Unfortunately, the big question is how do I make money on it? And I say, well, when people started on Instagram, their first question wasn't how do I make money on it? Now that we do a lot of internet marketing, it is. But I'm like, just have fun with it and see yeah. what happens. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Instagram's a tough one for me too because it's like most of my stuff needs links. And so yeah. – I don't know. I don't use it. A, I use it some, but I don't use it a whole lot just because yeah. it doesn't really do anything for me. Well, you, you know? could use stuff like Linktree, but for some reason, my oh, I have Linktree. Link yeah. Does your link die? My yeah. link die. Yes. So that was yeah. pissing me off. Yeah. So I actually built a landing page funnel, like a Linktree funnel out of ClickFunnels. Wow. <laughs> so I have it. The same, That's creative. Same, yeah. Same. Cause I'm like, I already have ClickFunnels, so I might as well use it. So it's the same setup. Mm -hmm. And it has my picture and like, and now I can actually add better images to it and it just goes straight down. So oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. 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 I have that and I got all my socials on it and stuff and I don't have landing pages or any of that stuff yet. I don't really have anything I sell per se yeah. at this point. So, you, you know, just I just do the show page with all your show stuff on it and that's it. Yeah. And like that'd be a lot. Oh my like, God, that'd be a lot. Well, you kind of break it down like to, you know, like the, the top three and then you have like, so you have your pod, so who you are, what you talk about, all right. that stuff, right. your podcast stuff with a couple of podcast interviews and then your YouTube, like, and anything else that you have going on and maybe even have it to where they can sign up to get notifications on your next guest. So they know who's going to be coming on or if they want to sign up to be a guest and all that kind of good fun stuff. Yeah, I could actually, yeah. Cause Oh, I like that idea. <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> so, this is what I do. Okay, so are you trying to get more uh, business clients at this point, or are you kind of set with all that right now? Um, I'm trying to take on a couple more. Um, okay. but my clients are also ones that are do done with you kind of clients. Like I don't, I don't do the whole like digital agency where it's like completely done for you services. Because then what happens is, first of all, the clients aren't learning the process. I don't want my last client that I signed on, you know, I do monthly. I'm like, listen, my goal is for you to not this check again. Like if we can get you completely set up, at, you know, and you're good to go and you understand everything and we have everything running and you know what you're doing. Great. Like I don't do a minimum. I'm like, my thing is like, you pay me when you need me and I'm here to help, you know, guide you through the process. But I, see, that's different than the, than an agency that says, okay, let's like a VA or something like right. that, because they're the ones doing the work. You're telling yeah. them, Hey, this is the direction, the direction to go yeah. in now, now go. 
<laughs> right. And I, I help them through, like, because, you know, I don't want them to have to learn everything that, you know, like, that I've had to learn. So right. it's basically helping them and guiding, like, this is what we're, based on what you're trying to do, this is what I recommend. Yeah. And then helping them through the process, getting them through it faster. And, right. but having them doing it is, is pretty important, or at least doing it along with me, like, where we can get on and do a Zoom and kind of, you know, like, do like watch them try to build out everything and then go over like what email sequences, what are we looking for and having the conversation and yeah, but I, I need people that are in it because when you're not in it and you're just on the side of it, you're not, it's an ownership thing, I guess. Cause like you've spent this time doing it and then you're also learning the process. And at the same time, I'm teaching you how to talk about it. So while we're building it, I'm teaching you how to start promoting it because I don't want to build it. And then you start promoting it because now you've wasted precious time. So, I agree with that. It's yeah. kind of like you have to have your, yourself in it, your authentic self in yeah. it, you know, and that's extremely important to where like a, a VA stuff and they're going to try to, your, your line uh, to know who you are and write okay. in your language and all that stuff. And it's still not you. Right. So especially video you have, I mean, what are you going to do? Have a VA. This, uh, this is, uh, you know, no. <laughs> that doesn't work, man. Oh, trust me. I know. I tried it once. <laughs> and I'm, not with the VA, but I mean, like, no, I did not. But that's when I realized I had to like get comfortable doing this or else I was not going to make it in the world doing what I want to do. I, yeah. I can see that in you though. I think you, I think you're going to kill it anyway. I really do. Thank there, you. Well, now my goal is to get on stages and to like present and yeah, like I would love like for companies, like corporate companies to bring me in so I can teach, you know, their employees, like how to do the follow-up sequences, how to reach back out, like how to fill that pipeline without having to like bang the phones and how to social network and make videos that are going to bring clients to you. So yeah, I'm trying to get on stage. That's another thing I'm working on. So we'll see. Do it, do yeah, it, do it, do it. We'll oh, see if I'm I can. Oh, I'm working on it. I got invited to one and I had to turn it down because I'm going to be out of town for something else. So. So, well, I mean, you know, if you could, you could start maybe at a college or something. Yes. And I'm actually going to um, try at UCF with the Veterans Resource Center because nice. I'm a veteran and I want to yes. help veterans out. So yeah. You'd be amazing at that. Well, yeah. You. Oh yeah. Yeah. I could see that. I could see the fire there for you, <laughs> you know, but I could see you standing up and saying, get up off your butt. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'd I be a motiv no motivational speaker. <laughs> right. I have no filter. I'm like, when I feel like cursing, it's going to happen. That's Unless okay. Cold, I, can't. Yeah. I have, a, I have allowed everything on this show pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. I allowed religion and, and, and God's always welcome on the show. And right. I don't care what people, as long as that's authentically you, right. I'm okay with it. Right. If they have a iTunes or somebody else has a problem with it, then guess I'm not going to be on that. Right. You know, I, I, I'm not worried about that type of thing. I am worried about you, that my guests are authentic, that they're really who they are, who they say they are. So that people, they can find their tribe. You, you yeah. can't, you can't not be yourself and expect to have clients that fit with you. Right. It just doesn't work. Nope. And I've I turned mean, down clients before because. <laughs> because you can find somebody, you know, and I mean, if yeah. you're, if you're a person of religion and, and you believe that they could find clients just swear every other word. And it's right. like, it, it, it's not that they're going to discriminate and not want to work with them, or maybe it will be depending on how they feel about that. But it will get annoying after a while. Yes. You know, it, it will it will grate on your nerves. And, and once you start, you know, you get paid and you have other clients and it's just this one that you're like, oh, God, I have to do this again. You know, <laughs> you don't want you, you don't want your entrepreneurial journey to turn into the roadway to hell. It's pretty much yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> well, that's the great thing about when you when you run your own company is you choose the kind of company you want to have. Yes. And exactly. that's just everyone's like, why are you doing things this way? I'm like, because I'm building a company that I want to create for the future me in life that I want to have. And I'm like, that's where I'm going. And that's, you can't, I stop. get, I get a lot of that stuff. Like it's yeah. uh, Oh, why do you charge for your podcast? Because it's my, my thing, dude, oh, I do I, a lot I was, of work. You explained it perfectly. Why? Because I'm going to yeah. get the transcript. I'm going to get everything that I've been hoping I get. Cause I'm going to turn those into comment cards and I'm going to yep. have my soul. Like you're saving me. <laughs> yeah. 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 And oh that's exactly God. what I offer people. But, you know, yeah. I guess there's a, that's the thing I was going back to because we were talking about 
like Western society, the eight hour work day, the mindset, you know, not being goal orientated, but right. being more gravitated towards hourly pay for hourly work. Right. And this is the same concept. Podcasters aren't supposed to do that. It's right. just not acceptable and all this stuff. Who says? Right. I've always been the kid. I, I, I annoyed the heck out of my teachers because I was that kid that always asked why. Yeah. I, I hated I got, that. I got one of those. I have one of those. So I completely understand. <laughs> I hated it. They, were, they hated me, man. Yeah. Because I, I, I had legitimate, really good ideas, you know, so they were like, yep. okay, okay. Uh, so I just have never played. I'm not saying I try to break the rules all the time, but I make my own. But you're also open to a new path or a new logic behind, you know, behind it. It's not about, like I said before, like for me, it's not about, is it, this is the way we've always done it. It's like, okay, so based off of the current information at hand and what we're trying, like, what makes the most sense? Yeah. Like, Open-mindedness. Think, yeah. And I think that's where I kind of wanted to when I went for my degree, like my master's in governmental management, like I wanted to be the person, not the politician, but the person behind it, looking at policies and being like, this doesn't make sense this way. Like, why aren't we doing it this way? And moving stuff around. So maybe when I get older, we'll see if I actually use my degree. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, but it's a thing where a society is built on constructs where we could go into all kinds of them, like the, you know, the FDA and the, and the, and the pharmaceutical drugs. Let's or, not go into that. It won't end well. I, it won't end at all, I probably. I can't, I, can't, <laughs> I can't stand any of it, like in any way, shape, or form. I'm on board with you. That's yeah. why I'm bringing it up. I'm but like, oh my gosh. But we can't blame them either because as a society, we yes. let people that speak louder saying that they want to have the freedom to do what they want, make it so that way we're all subject to the laxadaisiness of our government officials, yep. like other countries don't eat the things that we eat. It's banned. Like, exactly. Like how are, how is it okay here? I don't, I don't understand. Which is, yeah, I'm like, I don't get it. Yeah. And there's so many things here. Not that I'm complaining because uh, for me personally, I got to take ownership in what I did and didn't do. Right. You know, I mean, there's some things that are out of our control like Nixon put the gold standard, like it was uh, $1 for one ounce of gold. Yeah. And he took us off the gold standard. And ever since then, there's been inflation and the cost of living hasn't gone up with the increase in, in you know, increase in the minimum wage. And so we're where we're at now. Right. And, and that's what the cause of that was. But we didn't speak up in the middle of that and say, hey, wait a second the price for this drug is way too high compared to what we would pay for it because we had insurance and we never even saw the prices as they right. were skyrocketing uh, right under our nose, but we didn't pay attention because we weren't paying anything. So it didn't bother us. Now it's totally changed. And before I get on a huge rant, I think I better <laughs> shut up and go back to what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is fun for me. I'm like, this is great. It could be, it could be an all day thing. So that's why I well, the try not to do like that. When it comes show. like the pharmaceutical stuff, I usually, I haven't had cable in years because right. I don't like the commercials that come with it. Absolutely. Um, so like I recently, I'm a Trekkie. So Picard came out on CBS <gasps> All Access. So I, I know. So I signed up for CBS All Access and I also have Hulu with Disney Plus and stuff like that. So like I, I haven't done with CBS yet, but with Hulu, I kept seeing the ads come through for um for pharmaceutical stuff yeah and honestly i hit All them the up time. i hit them up on chat and they're very good i was like listen i don't want to see these ads we don't take drugs here like i don't even have tylenol in my house like we don't do it like i so can i not see these ads because even my daughter her want like some of the side effects on one of the ads she's like mom that just doesn't make sense i'm like i know honey um yeah so, your left arm falls off yeah or but oh, so God. they actually stopped showing the ads. So now I just, wow. have to read, just yeah, they won't show me that on Hulu no longer shows me any pharmaceutical ads. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. I wish they wouldn't show any ads at all. So I pay for the no ad Hulu yeah. and they get ads all the time and it just infuriates me. 
You shouldn't if you get the no ad Hulu. It's oh, no, you though. do because they call it advertisements or something, um, or they call it something different. So, I mean, it's long. A lot. Some of them are, are like almost two, three minutes long. Yeah, commercial no. Commercial set, and I'm paying no. for the no commercial thing. Yeah, no, I would stop paying them for the no commercial yeah. thing. But yeah, you yeah. tell them what ads you don't want to see. It's, it's really, technology has a way to do that these days. Like people need to start speaking up and yeah, saying, stand listen, up for yourself. I don't want to see this crap. And then hopefully if enough people then start speaking up, because it's always the people that speak up the most mm -hmm. that seem to be the ones that get what they want. And unfortunately, the ones that are on the same mindset and path that I, I like, I'm like, you guys, no one's speaking up. I'm like, get out there and say something. Like, tell them we don't want that anymore. Tell them we want more. And just like I tell people when it comes to my community and even with Florida, I'm like, listen, and I, I feel, you know, like, I don't know what your your thing is on abortion and stuff like that. But I'm like, honestly, if, if the state of Florida ever made it to where women cannot have an abortion, I am moving and I am taking my taxpayer dollars somewhere else. And that's it. Like I'm out. Yeah. You know, and that's your choice. See, that's the thing is people don't understand they have a choice they because I, yeah. the one phrase I guess that I, I dislike the most, I'm trying not to use hate, but hate is a strong word, but okay, yeah, I do hate it, <laughs> mm -hmm. is that's the way it is. Yeah. It's a cop-out. It's a cop-out for, I, I, I'm not going to investigate it. I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to, you know, see if I can, if there's another way, because that's the way it is. Yeah. It's the way it's always been, nope. you know, yeah. that type of thing. I mean, when did we stop thinking for ourselves? When society started making it to where school systems became, a, you know, a setup of this is what it's supposed to be. And then you go here and go here and you get stuck. And, but now it's with this generate, like, it's beautiful. That's why I said like with TikTok, even when you look at it, like the information that you, you, people are putting out there at 15 to 60 second intervals of just like what I've been able to learn with different things. Like it's fantastic. And people are speaking up now and you're reaching more people. Like more and more people are speaking up and it's reaching, shoot, there's certain people on there with what, 21 million followers and their views are getting millions and millions and millions. Like it's just doctors are on TikTok. Yeah. Like, and like what they've done, like what the doctors have done on there, like I love it. And they actually like talk about how, you know, teens, like when they're teenagers, like they're, 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 their highest thing that, you know, could possibly cause death is suicide. And that, you know, they're like, doctors join TikTok so we can be here for you. Reach out if you need help. They have a phone number in their profile. Like, you know, people are reaching out and connecting and it's, it's pretty amazing and it's going to change. It's, there's, but no, there's, but no way. Cause the youth now are, uh, they don't want, they don't want what we've created and they're, I don't think they're going to stand for it. And I actually applaud that. And what's funny yeah. is even in millennials, they're taught, I mean, our people, you know, older people are like, oh, they're just so lazy and they don't want to do anything and they don't want to show up for work and they don't, you know, where's their work ethic and all right. this stuff, but that's all a construct of what we've built. Right. And we, ha and I, I live in Michigan and we have a lot of factory work here and I had worked in a factory, uh, oh my God, as well in Camus, um, and then just recently as well. But the overwhelming mindset is overtime is great. Oh, this is great. I'm so happy. Yeah. And if you do 40 hours a week, you're part time to them. Yeah. It is a sick mindset. I'm sorry. They have other things to do. I would refuse it all the time. And they, well, the I was thing. actually called lazy because I was doing this show. I was working 40 hours a week. And, you know, I was doing a couple other things too. But I mean, this was crazy. It's a lot of a lot of time for me, right? And I would schedule my UK people and the people from Ireland or you know the areas that if I would try to have them out at six o'clock at night, well, that's like two in the morning or one in the morning for them or midnight right. or something, and they just can't do that. So when they tried to make me work a Saturday, I would say no every time, right? Because it's the only time I could schedule anybody because they had me there from seven o'clock in the morning till three. I don't get home until almost four. You know, I got time enough to do a couple shows and then edit at four o'clock in the morning before I go back to work. 
But that's the funny, like, so even when it comes to, like, even with my previous, previous employers, I'm like, technology, if you use it correctly and you put the right processes in place, you create more to where your employees don't have to work the overtime and they don't, like, you don't have to create things to make it time to give them. Like how you're saying, like, I they come up with things. I so agree with you like, on there's this. There's so many different processes and things that are being missed to create a streamlined workflow that allows employees to then, first of all, professional development and growth, let them learn something new. Like in the army, we were always taught, know the position above you and below you at all times. And that was always a big, that followed me after that. Like I'm always learning around me. I pick up things, I'm learning. So I need time to do that. Like I shouldn't be like 50 million of the same things over and over again. And it's just like with social media now too, like employees have to get on social media and, and network. But I'm like, okay, well, if you're a company and you have a marketing department, what assets or what you know information are you then sending to your employees for them to be able to utilize without having to come up with everything on their own, without having to come up with the con, you know, like what are you doing to aid them, to help them with scheduling their posts, to teaching them, to then, you know, allowing them these freedoms and creating something that if they catch a lead from social media that actually drives to their pipeline and they can connect. Like I've actually found this thing, like it's the Uh oh, the video the video and stopped for a second again. So if, can you go back and tell us that again? I'm sorry. No worries. Um, so like on, on my Facebook, I found a Chrome extension. It's like to-do list or something. So I, it's actually right up there. So if I'm on Facebook and like I see something and I'm commenting or I'm having a conversation, I can actually just click it and it pops up and I can set a reminder to follow up. So I'm making like my Facebook uh, section, my uh, CRM without having to leave the wow. platform. Wow. And if That's you're on, like, nice. Oh, yeah. And if you're on someone's website too, and you're looking at it, you can actually click something and it pulls the website and you can set a date to follow up and remember to look back and, so that way, if you're meeting people and you're networking online, you have a system in place right there to follow up. And I love I it. need that. It's, I, it's I showed my buddy Tim I, yesterday because we were doing a Detroit Lions podcast. I think I did two of those yesterday. And right. then uh, he <clears throat> and I'm like, I showed him. I says, if somebody messages me, right, within two hours, it's 15 people down. Yeah you know, or something like that. Yeah. I guess I showed him and he's like, Oh my God. I'm like, yeah. Cause I'm like talking to people constantly, you know, and he's, uh, he said, yeah. And, and I'm like, you know, I'm getting old. I have a hard time remembering. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no matter what these days, like it's a hard time remembering. That's why you have to put processes in place that make it quicker and faster and better for yourself. I will find yeah. out what this, what is the app again? Um, I think it's to do, I'll send it to you. It's, it's in my, Chrome. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Send it to me. Yeah. Cause That'll I was be good. stuff like that. Cause I was like, man, I wish there was a way for me to do it. So of course I start looking around and I found it and I was like, Oh, I mean, I have a lot of Chrome extensions and I, then, then, then I'll start running slow and I'll get rid of stuff I ain't using. For me, I was like, <laughs> man, I need a Chrome extension to organize all my Chrome extensions. <laughs> exactly. Turn them on only when I need them and stuff. Yeah. yeah that'd be, that'd be great. Anybody yeah. listening that codes. I'm just kidding. Yeah. It's great. like, and that's when I, I talk to somebody. I remember that I sent them a message or I need to follow up on something or whatever it is. Like you have to use social media for like, for us entrepreneurs, like social media isn't for fun. It's for work. It is. It, it is. is. It, yeah. it is. But then I turn it into fun too. And then I can't work differentiate. Is, for us, work is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I can't differentiate. <laughs> right. Like people are always like, I'll be at a bar and I'm like drinking wine on a Friday night with my laptop working and I'll have strangers come up to me. Why are you working? And I'm like, cause I'm having fun. Can you leave me the fuck alone? Like <laughs> talking to strangers at the bar and trying to figure out what's going on in their life. Not even though I do close a lot of deals at bars, but I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm, this is fun for me and drinking red wine. And I'm like, jamming i have my headphones in i'm like this is great this is this is my friday night like this is the life yes that's weird no, i'm kidding <laughs> i love it that's great <laughs> so okay we have covered so many different topics today <laughs> yeah wow this this is going to be a hard one to title i'll let you know that one right, right you like just a whole lot of shit no, i'm kidding i think that's going to be the title yes you just you just came up with it the whole just a whole bunch <laughs> But if you had one thing that you were going to tell a potential client or someone that was interested in working with you, what would that be? 
Um, or you can say a couple of things. I guess I can't yeah. limit you. <laughs> well, for me, is a majority of the clients that come to me are are hesitant with going, like with just doing. So if you're looking for somebody that's like you, when you talk to them, you're like, man, like this person just makes me want to do shit and like, just go. That's, that's who I am. If you don't want that energy then I can't do it because my energy is always up here. And usually when I'm, yes, usually when I'm with people, it's just like energy, 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 let's go. And I am one of the biggest cheerleaders, especially when it comes to them getting stuff done. So I believe that, you know, the people that I bring on, like, they can do it. I just need them to be ready to go. Like, don't, there's no half-assing with me. Prior service as well. Like, don't come in half-assing. Like, you got to go. Like, let's Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. Yeah. So do you have clients that come back to you? I, I know you set a time frame. Do you set a time frame, like, they do homework and they come back type of thing? Well, so the time frame, so they pay me monthly. My okay. goal is for them to not continue month after month after, or at least not at the starting so when I start it's a, it's a, a you know a rate and because that's when we're getting going that's like including you know walking you through on how to build the funnels getting everything set up teaching you the back end stuff front end stuff once that's created and let's say we're now ready to launch okay well you don't need me for this what do you want to use me for now and then I discuss it with them based on what because some people still want more attention and stuff along that line. And I'm just like, listen, I can be here for you. I can help you through it. And every time you talk to me, you're going to be like, all right, cool. Let's do this. Let's do that. But others just want somebody that they can, you know, just be like, listen, if I just keep you on this monthly retainer, can I just reach out every now and then and ask you a question? And if it turns into something more, then you can be more hands-on. So it just kind of, my goal is, I don't like to be a coach that has to stay there with you. It like makes sense. Yeah, because everyone makes sense. different coaches at different phases. So if I'm still at the next phase where you're going and you're like, great, let's keep Heather on. But if you're doing something and it's like you need somebody else to coach you on something else specific that I don't do, I want you to go that way. And I don't want you to have to keep paying me monthly. That makes sense. Yeah. But I, I guess my question is, is uh, do you have people that come back to you without the homework being done? Oh, if they're not getting, yes. So they don't, yes. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you, how do you kick their rear end into uh Um, well, everybody, <laughs> so what I realized is everybody learns differently and does things differently. So now after I get to know you and if I get you a certain setup that's pretty standard and we do everything, but then it's still not working for you, I then break it up in a way that'll work for you. Oh, so that I'm makes sense. good at communicating and figuring out how people work. Right. And if you have other stuff too, like some people are still working a full-time job plus trying to get their thing going. And if I need to break it up into smaller pieces to get you right. moving, so you're not seeing this huge thing come your way, I just do that. I just do it smaller pieces, one step at a time, motivate them along the way and just show them that with each little step, we're going to get closer to where they want to be. And it, it works. Now, see, I would take the baseball bat approach, but I guess that works too. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baseball bats or frying pans. <laughs> frying pans. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. So is there anything you want to leave everybody with uh, before we close? Um, basically, just go out there and do it. Like whatever it is you're doing, even if you love working for somebody else, just make sure you're, you're learning new things to hone in on your craft learn new ways to market yourself, get your business out there and just do the best that you can, but just be happy every day. And if you're not happy every day, that's really your fault. So shit, you better find what you want to do. That's happy. And just fucking do that. Because if you're not doing it, you only got one life. Just go for it. That's right. That's yeah. right. Oh, and uh, where can people get a hold of you? Um, you can't, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 Anywhere. Um, I'm pretty much at, um, so on pretty much all social media platforms, it's at the Heather Hargrove. So my name, Duh. um, very active on LinkedIn and TikTok, of course, and Facebook. Um, but if you want to shoot me over an email and discuss anything further, it's hello at by Grove. So B Y G R O V E.com. Nice. That's okay. Me. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. We had tried to do this a few times <laughs> the last time. It didn't work out because of the volume. <laughs> Something happened with the mic. or Oh, no, I was using the other computer. That's what it was. Yeah, the static. Yeah, it was staticky. It was didn't very want all static. that. Yeah. So, all right. 
We appreciate you guys that are listening. We appreciate you, Heather, for being here. Mm -hmm. If you would like to, please hit the like button, subscribe button, put a comment down there, and give us a thumbs up. And after you do all that, sit on the couch because that was an exhausting thing. <laughs> uh, just wanted you to be able to relax after that. But no, we really appreciate you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. As I told you, high energy. People are done when they're done. <laughs> <laughs> they're done. <laughs> And just like they're done, we're done. You have a great day, everybody, and peace out.